genuinely want to thank Kenny for the hundreds of times that I've gone up there and he's helped me. So um, that said, I'm coming from the position of the comprehensive plan, which the lawyer mentioned earlier. An adopted comprehensive plan is a resource that the planning board needs to use when making its decision. It is, quite literally, the voice of the village of Cold Spring. It represents years of information gathering and the opinions of residents. Our adopted plan has a series of goals. Two of these goals should be considered specifically when rendering your opinion. Goal number one, preserve and enhance the small town, historic, neighborly, diverse, and safe character of village life. And goal number four, enhance the economic vitality of the village. During the process of assembling the comprehensive plan, over and over again in our resident surveys and input sessions, folks stressed that the most important thing that Cold Spring can do is preserve what makes us Cold Spring. When defining what it is that makes us special, folks listed our setting, of course, but also walkability and the unique small business climate. Small business climate. One of the reasons people visit here and enjoy living here is because of the unique small business climate. In Cold Spring, we have businesses started by local entrepreneurs who are responsive to local needs, and many of which use local food products. They looked around and said, what is not here? What would be different? They show the world that we don't taste like anywhere USA. <coughs> Some people feel that if we discourage Dunkin' Donuts, or any business for that matter, we will discourage all business. But I contend quite the opposite. Introducing a Dunkin' Donuts into our small business economy will not just be a threat to current businesses, it may effectively discourage other small, unique food businesses from opening in the future. If we show we welcome it, the specialized food, food businesses will not even try to open here. They will just go elsewhere and leave all those Main Street storefronts empty. Cold Springs character will change. Opening the door to fast food is not enhancing our economic vitality. It will be a detriment to it. On page 48 of the plan, it notes that businesses should provide local jobs and be at scale that respects the village's small town character. The owner of one, of one small food business told me this week that they have grown from two employees to 12 in two years. This is the type of business we should promote. Another area which makes Cold Spring special is the fact that we are small and that residents can walk to needed services. The commercial area is adjacent to many homes rather than being separate. Like many, I walk to Food Town, the bank, the dry cleaner, and up to now, a really excellent car repair. I love that. Many of Cold Spring residents walk up and down Marion Avenue to complete their errands. It's a very special thing. And thus far, the current businesses have been relatively clean and quiet neighbors. Even though the gas station has long hours, traffic noise is minimal. It is proposed that this quiet business be changed for one that will be open from 6 a.m to 10 p.m. initially. Although the potential of going to 24 hours like other stores in this region is out there. They're all open 24 hours. The cars will be idling, potentially playing music, talking to a menu board, and all the while adding exhaust to our air. In the evenings, this store will become a hangout for young people. And because it will have no seating, they will congregate in cars in the parking lot or sit on the loading docks that face Marion, subjecting the residents of our street to even more noise and trash. And by the way, they do now sit on the loading docks. We're expecting an expansion in that. Plan 18 of the, page 18 of the plan suggests we address negative impacts like these. The environmental impacts of this application need to be considered as significant. On page 25, the plan affirms that we want to be a walkable village, and 
on page 51 suggests we make the Chestnut Street area safer. This applicant wants to ch cram three businesses on one small lot. While some cars are jockeying for position at the pumps, others will be trying to access the drive through or parking spaces. There is no safe traffic, traffic flow. And I would like you to refer you to the site plan that is in your packets from earlier this year when you requested that the applicants show cars at the pumps, unlike the one that's up there. I have a picture from the applicant the cars sitting at the pumps will be blocking the drive through entrance and exit. This is not a safe situation for anyone. It's so dangerous it gives one pause. But the most significant issue, and one that has not even be, been addressed, is that nowhere on the site plan is there a safe path for pedestrians. Nowhere. There is no sidewalk from the street to the Dunkin' Donuts. How can we even consider a business that is dangerous for walkers when we say in our plan that number one, we want to be a walkable <coughs> village and that Chestnut Street should be safer? Not to mention that a lot of these pedestrians, as my husband pointed out, will be youth. And they are far less inclined to pay attention to cars jockeying for position at pumps in parking spaces and going through a drive through So I have here, which I'm not going to read, four pages of notes about the site that I accumulated going through your files and sitting at the meetings and listening. There are a number of issues that involve circulation and safety. I'm also including comments on the litter situation, which so far hasn't even been discussed. 